Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews. Today I'm giving you guys 10 quick tips on what to look for when buying a brand new gaming PC with the whole 2015-2016 holiday season coming up. Now the reason you guys are watching this video probably is because you want to have a gaming PC but you're coming from a console or from a laptop and you don't quite know what to look for when buying a gaming PC. That is what I'm going to address right now. Tip number one when buying a PC is not falling for the marketing bullshit that's going on. So it's not because your eSport athletes use it that it's going to be better. It's not because it looks better, has more lights on it that it's better. It's not because they have advertised incredible overclocks and i7s and a quadrillion gigabytes of memory that it's going to be better. So don't fall for marketing guys. It can, a PC can look incredibly boring and still be really good for gaming. Tip number two. When you're buying a gaming PC, the graphics card or GPU is everything. Most CPUs will be fine, but it's really the GPU that creates the frames per second. So that's what you really have to invest in. You have to get the best GPU that your budget can allow you to get. So when you're buying a notebook, I wouldn't recommend going with anything slower than a GTX 960M because anything slower than that really is just not worth buying compared to the integrated graphics because Inside your CPU there will already be a GPU, uh, just not a good one for gaming. So, you know, get the best stuff you can possibly get. For desktops, don't buy into anything lower than a GTX 950, preferably get a 970 or a 980. And when you're going for AMD, a 370 or a 270X is basically the least to get. Anything less will not be worth your money, really. Tip number three is about CPUs, its cores and its threads. Now what I see a lot when people buy stuff is like, yeah, I have a quad core, while well, really they have an i3 dual core with hyper threading. Now something to keep in mind is that a thread is only about 40 to 50% as fast as a core. It's basically some fancy technology that makes your CPU have one core, but actually act as if it has two cores. That's what threads do. So keep that in mind. For gaming nowadays, I would really recommend going with at least a dual core with hyper threading. So two cores, four threads, but to make sure you're really up there, uh, I would go with a quad-core i5. It's probably a good thing to go with. Uh, in terms of frequencies, you get 4 gigahertz or 3 gigahertz. It really doesn't matter all that much um, because most CPUs are fast enough anyway. I actually did a video uh, some time ago where I tested a really expensive one versus the cheapest one. Um, and there wasn't really much of a difference. So, yeah, you don't really need anything more than an i5 for gaming. That's something to keep in mind, but you don't need anything less either because it will hold you back a little bit. Tip number four is about RAM or memory. It's basically something really important because your PC stores all of its data in there temporarily. So how much do you need? That is the question, right? Do I go 4, 8, 16, 32? Um, well, basically eight gigabytes of RAM is plenty for most uses. A lot of people will sell you 16 gigabyte PCs, that's also really good, but over 16 gigabytes, when you're talking about a gaming PC, it's really not worth it. And well, four gigabytes is often enough, but you might want some headroom there. So eight gigabytes is probably value-wise a sweet spot. Tip number five, again, memory or RAM, this time on your graphics card. And something really easy to keep in mind is that usually two gigabytes is plenty for just single screen full HD gaming. If you want to go to triple screen setups or 4K setups, you need four or eight gigabytes or six gigabytes, something like that. But more memory on a graphics card doesn't really mean anything in terms of performance. Tip number six, it's about lights. Basically a lot of PC gear will have a bunch of RGB lighting or lights here, lights there, like I have on my keyboard and on my PC and on the monitors and on the mouse, everything. But LEDs don't mean FPS. And what you guys are probably looking for is FPS because FPS is everything you need to game. Um, so it's it kind of ties in with tip one, just don't buy into something just because it looks good. Because usually if they spend money on looking fancy, that's less money they can spend on performance. Tip number seven is about networking and networking cards. Now I'm going to not talk about Wi-Fi here because basically if you talk about Wi-Fi, you have to go with AC Wi-Fi. It's the only logical choice to go with. Um, so we're talking about network cards. And what's really important to note here is that stuff like um, networking cards is really unimportant. Now some companies will sell you um, the killer networking cards for gaming, right? And 
really they're not that important. Uh, they're not actually better. Basically, Intel, in my opinion, has the best networking cards overall. They're always built into your motherboard anyway, so you don't really need to go for it uh, as in a separate device or a separate option. So that's something really to keep in mind. All networking cards are good, no matter if they're from Broadcom or Intel or Killer. Um, but just don't get something that's just fast Ethernet um, because you really need gigabit Ethernet. But usually you have gigabit and it's not even listed because everything has it. Tip number eight, size does not matter with PCs. Graphics cards can be any size and cases can be any size as well. The case I have right here is actually way too big for the hardware that's in there. But before I used this case, I actually had a hardware that was way too big for the case it was in. So the size of the PC does not matter. A lot of people say, yeah, but bigger cases have better airflow. Not at all right, actually. Basically, the smaller you can get your case, but still have uninterrupted airflow, the better. So don't buy something because it's bigger or because it's smaller. It will most of the time not matter as long as it's you know put together well. Tip number nine. Basically, whatever you do, get an SSD. SSDs is what makes your PC fast. You can get, you can get the fastest i7 in the world, the fastest graphics card, a load of memory, and your PC will feel slow if you just run it off of a hard drive. I would definitely recommend everyone, no matter what your budget is, to get an SSD in your system. Last but not least, tip number 10. It's about your operating system. And again, I would really recommend you guys to not care too much. Basically, any Windows version will do. So 7 or 8 or 8.1 or 10, you can upgrade all of them to Windows 10 anyway. And Windows 10 is really good. Windows 8 was really good. I don't see why people hated it so much. But really, your operating system for gaming, as long as you stick to Windows, does not matter. What not to do, though, is go for a Apple device with Macintosh software on there. No matter what version it has, the amount of games that are available is simply very restricted and basically not worth buying into the whole ecosystem from Apple anyway. SteamOS, a lot of you may have heard it, like Steam Boxes. You can go with that, sure, but the, you know, the amount of games is still pretty limited there as well. Right then guys, so there you have it. 10 quick tips on what to look for when buying a brand new gaming PC. If you like this video, press that like button. If you didn't like this video, press the dislike button. You can leave a comment, share, subscribe, all that sort of usual stuff. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you want to support me get better equipment for filming these sort of videos, you can use our Patreon site as well. Thank you very much for watching.